known be seen web TV I'm Trish Springsteen your host and it's my absolute delight today to introduce you to our wonderful guest Kirsty Fields now Kirsty is here as an expert in her field let me just share with you a little bit about her bio so you can see why we are so excited to have her on with us today look for more than 21 years Kirsty's transitional career in libraries, education and rugby league has seen her hold events-based positions from local to state government, state organisations and governing bodies to not-for-profit practices. So she has a very wide field of expertise. What I found really interesting was this next bit, describing what it felt like to manage 60 separate 60 separate social identities, including those of celebrities and people of influence, as the most stressful period of her career. And I think I can really understand that. Kirsty now utilizes the coping strategies she created to get her through that period to educate, encourage, and motivate micro business owners to cope with and find success amongst the ever increasing demands of marketing and promotions in an overcrowded digital environment. And that is exactly where we are now, which I thought was really a great way and reason to bring Kirsty on. <clears throat> Kirsty launched Social Ocean at the beginning of 2017 and has worked with, as I said, well over 60 businesses and hundreds of individuals teaching a variety of social media platforms. And she maintains six corporate consultancy clients at any one time. Very busy lady at juggling a lot of multitasking. Uh, she currently describes her role in the business community as a chance to uncover opportunities for clients that gives them a voice and platform to stand out from their own crowd. And it's those moments of excitement that get her out of bed each day. And it's those moments of excitement, which is why I asked Kirsty to be on the show today, because that's what we're all about. Stepping up, getting known, being seen. Welcome, Kirsty. Lovely to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I, I have to say, I, I had a flashback moment when you were talking about those 60 social media accounts and I, my heart started to race a little bit harder. And just thinking about those days is uh, crazy to me now, just thinking, oh gosh, how did I do it? It really was stressful. And thankfully, I don't have that, I don't have that stressful life anymore. But wouldn't you say that was probably one of the biggest things that you've been able to bring forward to what you deal with and how you help people today? Oh, absolutely. So there's lots of things that I learned during that period about uh, processes. So uh, lots of marketing elements are process-based. Uh, they really uh, can be cookie cutter for for anyone from a micro business owner to a company. Um, so I certainly got into some great habits to allow me to maximize time uh, because running so many different entities, you know, even can be confusing, just making sure that you've got the right things in the right spaces uh, and also uh, being clever with some tech uh, products and software is very, very helpful. Oh, products and software. That's something we might touch on just in a little bit. But what I want to talk to you about now is how can your expertise help people to get known and be seen? My people watching are looking to have the courage to step up and share their message or their book, or they're looking for ways to prevent overwhelm. So from your experience that you've got from looking after the stress, uh, from planning social media, from planning events, what can you tell some of my listeners and watchers how they can get through that first step? Well, one of, one of the biggest things that I train clients in how to understand and what to understand and what to unpack about themselves as a business owner is that it's their passion and their knowledge that's practically locked inside them. It's, it's all inside their pretty little heads and we need to get it out of them and onto paper, you know, for your for your author clients that they're already doing that in, in the form of a book. But from my perspective, perspective, I'm trying to get them to put it out into uh, other digital places like their website and social media in particular because that's their traffic driver to their website. Um, and and a lot of people just don't realise that they know so much, but they share so little. 
So for me um, and my clients that I work with, I really need to get people to understand that, you know, just the tiniest pieces of information about themselves are interesting. And the not so interesting pieces of information that we know about ourselves or our or our business are as equally important to share. So when we when we have that discussion and it's normally in a workshop or brainstorming session, that's that's how I work one to one with clients particularly, um, or, or small groups or you know company teams for example. Once they they have that light bulb moment, I, I have. Um, described many a time that it's that light bulb moment that I see with my clients as they go, oh, that's actually lots of stuff, lots of stuff I have there to talk about. And then all of a sudden we've opened the floodgates. So once I've had that experience and and they've come to that moment, it's then about how it is that we can reduce the time involved or the perception of time involved with putting it out there. So I'm very much, um, you know, if I, I should have it on billboard outside my office that says work smarter, not harder. So I think a lot of people get into business because they have a concept that they're going to have a great lifestyle working for themselves. And I think that's probably the most inaccurate perception we could have um, getting into business because I think I've, I've probably never worked longer hours in my life, but um, it's, It really is about putting in the right effort for the right amount of time for maximum effort and maximum outcomes. So um, I I think uh, if, if your listeners and viewers can take on board that what's inside their head and what might actually keep them up at night is worth putting down on paper and reviewing and seeing how that might be turned into something else, uh, for their audience, community, friends, supporters, and the like. Love that. Love that. Especially starting at the basic, because unless you know yourself, it's really hard for you to get out there. So looking back on your journey, what was the methods that you used to start to be known, be seen, connect with your clients? What were the ones that you sort of started using? Uh, for my, when I first started my business, I, uh, I I had actually no intent to become a business owner. I, I've, I've, I am the accidental business owner. Um, very, very common circumstance um, is how I landed uh, into Social Ocean. But I, I, there's a few things that I did which have helped me no end. First of all, I created my own little focus group of cheerleaders. Uh, I think when we start out in business, we really need that sense of support and positivity behind us and people who are willing to have a conversation with us because there's so many things going on in our mind and we're excited about the prospects and ideas and creative juices are flowing. So my little focus group was created um, by both um, close personal friends, family members, but I sought out some friends who were in fact already business owners and I got them into a group and I was asking them questions about things, what they thought about me, what uh, I was presenting, did it reflect me? So it was really key for me when I launched my business to feel as though my business was an extension of me because now I was a business owner. Uh, sole trade at that at that point in time I didn't have any contractors or outsourced uh, people that I was working with or you know anything like that it was just me it was really important um, that I felt that what I was putting out um, was something that they could connect to even though they knew me so that made sense but um, past that, I really uh, looked at all the different things that I'd done, you know, in my my career as an adult in er- different fields and areas and found the joy, I suppose, in the things that I did, the, t- the way that I did things and tried to figure out how I could replicate that into my business scenario but of course, working in marketing, um, you know, I'd been using different softwares and I'd had uh, different uh, managers, different bosses, different organisations I'd worked for. Um, and I had some really great experiences with failure. <laughs> so yeah. I was also really trying hard to avoid that. 
Yeah. Awesome. Some great tips there that uh, some of our uh, watchers can model because I, I love the one about getting a group of people that are like-minded that you can bounce ideas off. That is, that is so essential when you're wanting to step up into something that's a bit different and outside your comfort zone. And uh, I love the idea that you've sort of saying there about failure and learning from failure. It's not failure, it's just finding out what didn't go wrong and moving forward. So those are really great tips that people can take away. Oh, I'm just, I was just going to say with that failure point, one of the really good things about, you know, I've, I can't remember what F-A-I-L stands oh. for, but you know, that, that little acronym that we use, what's really good about that is, um, you know, failure is probably a bit harsh word, but every time I do something, I review it. So I go back to what I did that, that last time. And even if it was an absolutely huge hit, I'm still looking for improvement. So, you know, it's not always necessarily a fail point um, <laughs> that, um, that I try to avoid, but I certainly try to improve as, as a response every time. Awesome. And that's, that's all we can do. Now, let's just switch to social media because I was going to talk to you about events, but since in our interesting times, we can't really get into the events, but I know that you're doing a lot on social media. What do you think of say, maybe two ways that people can use social media at this stage to expand their exposure, make it easy for people to find them? Well, uh, my number one tip is actually, uh, re I frame it as putting you in your business. So one of the biggest things that we have when we've got an individual profile, so for example, Trish Springsteen, the author, um, away from Trish Springsteen, the personal Facebook profile, as an example, if I use that, um, and, and there's going to be a lot of people out there in the world that are going to cringe and go, oh, I can't believe she said that. But I have been testing for myself the, the use of putting me into my business space and my business entities. So I actually have reduced the use of my Facebook personal profile and I post what some people might actually consider to be personalized style into my business page I make sure that I'm including my image because uh, I am the face of my business I'm the I'm the only individual that anyone knows no one knows who my contractors are or um, my team or my interns as they come in they really get a they really get a viewing although I have a team mentality I am the face of the business but I'm also, generally speaking, the one person who's going to work with my clients. So putting me and my face on my business page and tagging my personal profile mm. in that space means that my friends on Facebook also see that activity and they will generate engagement and traffic to my business page for me. The other thing about doing that specifically is that I have had phone calls from people that I went to school with or, and, and I mean, I mean, I'm in my forties. <laughs> so when I went to school with someone was a very long time ago, those people who I might be a, a personal Facebook friend with might not necessarily follow my business, mm -hmm. but I've received phone calls from them or, or direct messages or emails going, Kirsty, I, I see you're doing this with your business. Um, my boss needs help with this. Can you help? So mm -hmm. I'm actually creating an environment of awareness by putting my personal profile into my business rather than using my personal profile to promote my business. And the other thing about that that is a positive is that when we feel like we are being advertised to or spammed to, mm -hmm. we tend to shy away from a positive reaction with that. So if I spin off my business profile by putting myself there and bringing my friends into my business space, I'm not spamming them by bringing my business space into my personal life. Does that make sense? Interesting twist. And yes, you're right. It probably does fly in the face of some, not all, but some people. And I think it's an interesting thing to experiment with. Uh, probably something that 
needs people to push themselves out of their comfort zone a little bit more because they're, they're going to, doing it your way, as you suggest, uh, I think pushes people really outside their comfort zone. Because I did a, I did a uh, Facebook Live about a week or so ago uh, about taking masks off and stepping up and getting done being seen by doing that way from, on, your, on your business page means you've got to take some masks off. Because a business mask is a business mask sometimes, and people are really great at putting this business mask on. However, if we want to build up a relationship, we need to really know, like, know, and trust. At times, and especially now, I'm finding a lot of people want that business mask off. They want to the business. That's absolutely the key, the like, know, trust. So when I first started my business, that concept for me was really about making sure that people knew that I was the person who was turning up for them. And if they didn't like me, that was okay. They'll find someone else that they like. So this is the, the, other, the, the other side of that, that that people have a fear about is, oh, my God, what if they don't like me? What if I don't look the way that they think I should look or I don't feel the way I think I should feel. So you're absolutely right about stripping back um, the fear and the expectation about showing up on camera. Um, and but there's great ways that you can you can do you can do that and get more comfortable by practicing. And I know, know Trish that you've got some great challenges in place across a year that people can get involved with to practice just that type of thing. But it is, you know, I don't wear I generally don't wear makeup. I have not a zero scrap of makeup on today uh but i'm not unhappy with how i look on camera but this is me yeah so i've turned up today i i do have clean clothes on i know you can't smell me but i smell good today and i feel good and that comes across on camera so i don't need to be made up if i don't want to be awesome um, you know, so there's some great things that we can do to make ourselves feel better to turn up, but it is really all about practice and making yourself feel as comfortable as you can on your end and it shows off when, when you're able to smile and you're able to, um, yeah, just be, just be natural. I think it's really important. People, people feel that. That's right. I mean, it, it's, it is one of the biggest things to be yourself. And uh, even when we get over this and, and we can get back to being and doing events and meeting, the, you still got to take that same persona all the way. Well, we will do eventually, one will hope. Yes. We will get to there. Uh, let's have a look at just a little bit quick conversation about the technology. And people are always asking, you know, I get overwhelmed by technology. Uh, how often do I have to do this? Uh, well, she wants me to now to do, talk about on my business page. That's fine. But how often does she want me to talk about it? And what should I talk about? And we did cover a little bit about the what because that was that basic finding out everything that you know. But a little bit about some of those questions. What sort of points that you can give our uh, watchers on that? Just quickly, if someone has a shop front, I always encourage uh, that business person to be making sure they post every single day that their shop is open. So if you're closed, you don't need to post, unless it was something like a happy Easter message. So that's a short, sharp little tip there for someone who's in that, that's that product-based space. But for, for me, I'm not open on weekends unless I'm pre-booked for an event and fingers crossed that happens again soon. Yeah. But we uh, really do not have to post every single day. You don't have to be interactive and active online or in your office any day that you don't feel like you want to. But the reason why we encourage activity and more and more activity is so that when, for example, my top clients might only be on social media once or twice a week. So if they only see my most popular posts, I have to try and filter through the different types of posts to get engagement and activity to get that post promoted through the algorithm. Algorithms are real. I don't, I don't use the word very much. It scares people off. Um, and also it changes so quickly and erratically. There's no point getting bogged down in that. But uh, what is ideal is that you are trying to figure out um, just by testing, you don't need to get bogged down into the behind the scene technology or insights. 
um, if you can and you get to that place of confidence, do so. But figuring out when your clients are online, if you're working with mums and dads, you know, eight o'clock at night is a great time to, to post something. Um, but if you're working with businesses, eight o'clock in the morning is a great time to be posting too. But everybody's business looks different and it really does come down to understanding who your client is or who the client is that you want to have because perhaps you're so new to the whole game you don't even know who your client is yet. Um, and unpacking information about that is, you know, a whole, a whole different conversation. But there's really trial, trial and error. But that client information, um, as you figure out who it is, will help you determine what platforms you need to be on. You do not need to be on all the social media. Um, if you're dealing with people who are, you know, plus 50 years old, get off Instagram. You don't need to be on Instagram. There are more people joining Instagram in older age groups, but um, you can you can wait till you've harnessed and successfully conquered Facebook first, which is where most people do, in fact, um, have uh, an activity level of some description. And if you're only working with corporates, then get yourself over to LinkedIn and try that out. And don't worry about Facebook or Instagram. So there, there's there's an answer um, that is really unique to each of your listeners and viewers, obviously. Um, but conquer one platform at a time. You don't have to stress yourself out by trying to do all things all at the same time if it's just a little too hard. So take a break on that side of things. Absolutely. I can't agree more. Uh, I call it ninja stalking. <clears throat> and I got that, term, got that term from a friend of mine, a uh, mentor that, that used it and I think it was a really great thing because it's, it's about finding out where your people are and then it's trial and error as you said uh, you might think that's where your best audience or your best clients are turning up but sometimes they turn up in places that you really didn't think about and it's just a matter of trial and error awesome I think there's some great tips that we've had here from Kirsty today from you it's absolutely brilliant we could probably speak for hours and hours on it because we haven't really delved into some of the technology to help make your time easier or things like that. Uh, I think from what I'm gathering from what, what you've shared today is find out who you are. Know what resources you have. Experiment. Step up. And I think one of the biggest things is explore switching and posting from your business page to your personal page and just see how that goes. I know people will be a bit worried about that, but I think it's all about trial and error. Try it. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine. But I think from what Kirsty is saying, you might be very surprised at the results that you get. So for you to share with me, what do you think your biggest lesson and insight that you've had in, over your years in business and life? I think asking questions and asking for help is sensational. Uh, I am a part of a huge business networking community and, and multiple business networking communities. And the power of a question uh, is going to give you the power of information. And what that means is to have conversations and create conversations and not necessarily in a, in a business setting, you can do that privately with someone that you've met, met. You can email them, take a conversation offline. But um, asking what you need to know and seeking out information from someone with experience is so much better than Googling the question. <laughs> yes, it is easy to go and Google, isn't it? But you'll just get, uh, you'll get a two-dimensional answer sometimes. It, you'll get what you want. But if you talk to someone, you might get more. Yes, than and, you, you, and want. you get context and you get the story behind the experience and you get the reason why it did work, didn't work, and where they might choose to improve or give you information. I've received some fantastic information that saved me from doing things against, uh, you know, government standards that I just didn't know because I had Googled and I had not taken the context correctly. So I, I've learnt from people and people's knowledge and passion and experience and skill in so many scenarios. So always ask a question. 
Awesome. I think that is probably a fantastic tip for our viewers to take away. Ask questions. And that, again, is not an easy thing for a lot of people. I know. I've been there. Uh, you have that little mindset, that fear that if you ask a question, you're going to be seen as less than professional, less than knowledgeable, less than an expert. No. You're going to be seen as someone who is expanding their viewpoint, their knowledge. And that question that you ask, you get that answer, you can pass it on down to your clients, people that are following you. And suddenly you become really brilliant expert because you know this and they don't know that you actually asked the question first. So it's all about perception. Awesome, Kirsty. Look, before we go, where can people find you? And I believe you've got a free gift that uh, might be very helpful for some of our viewers. Yes, and I know that we didn't talk too much about events today and, you know, current climate, it's a bit difficult um, to focus on that. Um, maybe that's a conversation for another day. Absolutely. But, um, and if we get back, I'll have you back on yeah, the pod. <laughs> I'd love that. But uh, right, even even though we're not currently on, on event mode, I have gotten uh, my brand new website that I launched. I've had the same website for a few years and I've launched a new one. So that's www.socialocean.com.au. But when you go and visit my website, immediately at the top, you can have a click through for a free event checklist. And it's, it's basically a free file that gives you all the things that you need to have in your event box. And I've got a couple of other ones that will be up in the not too distant future. So if that's of interest to people, head there. But uh, guess what, Trish? I am on all the social medias. Yes. So <laughs> you can find me everywhere just by looking up uh, Social Ocean AU. So um, I'm there, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and of course, Facebook. Yes. Absolutely. And it is a great uh, website. And it does come straight up in front of you people because I went and had a look at it. Oh, oh, oh this is an awesome website. And like, all right, there's that. You can't miss that freebie. And one of the things is uh, I will add to what Kirsty said. While we're not doing face-to-face -face events, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the information in that checklist can also be used for you to do online events because so you can take some of that information and just tweak it and think about well, if you want to do some seminars and webinars and some interviews and things online, you could use some of those things to promote that. And then you can be planning because one of the things I say to my people now is just because we're in a different situation doesn't mean to say we stop our marketing, stop our plans. Yes, we've switched a lot to uh, online, but we should be planning what we're going to be doing when we get that release button and we can then go a bit further. So planning your events and thinking about them now is a good idea. So that information that Kirsty's giving you, you'll find extremely valuable in all areas. Thank you so much, Kirsty, for being with us. It's been an awesome conversation. And as usual, whenever I'm speaking to my guests, with my guests, I find that there are so many avenues, so many things that come up that we could go and speak for so much longer. So, yep, I think, Kirsty, I'll put you down. When we have that little release button and the gates go up and we all flood back out into our perceived normality, certainly we'll have you back because then we can talk uh, really and focus on events because people will be wanting to get those back up. So, I would love that. I would really love to come back and talk to you about that. Thanks for having me today too. I love it. Absolutely. People, you've been watching Get Known, Be Seen, Web TV. Uh, today's guest has been Kirsty Fields. We've been discussing all things social media. Uh, and it's been lovely to hear from Kirsty's journey about some of the tips that you need to be known, uh, able to put into place to get known, be seen. Uh, stay tuned. Do make sure that uh, if you've been watching this, you do subscribe to our Get Known, Be Seen web TV channel and pop back because there will be more interviews with a variety of people who are taking their courage to step out and be there. Until next time, be awesome.